this document, which you can get on my website and I have a handout for, shows you how to take notes in four easy steps. The first step is consider a table of contents. You know, because when you're taking notes, the first thing you have to do is figure out how you're going to organize this. How are you going to, where are you going to put it, how are you going to save it, what units are, are you going to use. And so if you look over here at this picture, you can see a table of contents for my Civil War history class and it's organized by unit and then if you open up a unit it's organized by lessons. I went over one of the lessons in here and I came up with about two pages worth of notes. So I figure that's probably around average. So you want to consider how you want to organize this. I would suggest organizing your notes by lesson and or by unit at the biggest because if you consider that there's probably about 10 lessons in, in a unit and there's you know it, it, two pages per lesson that could be about a 20 page document so maybe by lesson is good. The other thing that you want to consider when you're thinking table of contents is what notes do I need to study for what. In ICON you run into quizzes and tests and those are the things that you need to study for. Lessons you can look at as you take the things so um, if you're organizing it, if you're if you're going to take a test for a quiz, you want to only look at the notes that deal with the quiz. If you look over here on the left, you can see that uh, my quiz one is about the fifth assignment down, and you can see that there are four lessons that cover that quiz: leadership of two presidents, Gettysburg, Pickett's Charge, Gettysburg Address. When I go to study for that quiz, I'm only going to pull up those lessons and no others. Okay, let's move on. The next step to taking notes is organizing the lesson. Again, here you want to think table of contents. When beginning your notes for a lesson, the first thing you put on the blank page are the titles. You go through your lessons and you look at the titles and you take those titles and paste them into a document and when you're done with that, it looks something like this. And I'm going to switch over to that video to show you really fast and then come back here. So right here what you're looking at is a document with only types. Once you do that, now comes the hardest and really the most meaningful step and that is to paraphrase or summarize the content material. This is the hardest part and it's also the most important. If you simply copy and paste you get nothing from your notes and if you write too much your notes become too hard to do. By the way, that is the most common mistake that I find with students when they take notes they write too much and it becomes a real hassle. Paraphrase means that you put into your own words and summarize means to make shorter and you need to do both here. So that's the thing when you're taking notes once you've pasted in those titles that's when you've got to stop copying and pasting that's when you have to start actually writing the notes yourself and this is critically critically important. If you write them yourself you'll memorize them and you'll have them ready for you and uh, if you don't it, it just won't really work out and if you put too much you're going to get tired out doing this so here are the guidelines you follow. Make a list if you can, shorten paragraphs to sentences and pages to paragraphs, and then also less is best, use only the most important material, and then use the headings to guide you on what is important. If you look over here, what I have here is something on Jefferson Davis. He was one of the two presidents that was a subject of this. This lesson is called The Two Presidents. Jefferson Davis was the leader of the Confederacy. And uh, I have a paragraph here uh, that, that, gives, that details his early years. Now, if I'm following my guidelines, I have to shorten this. I have to make this into a list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bullet point. And if it needs to be shorter than the original, the original is not even really that long. So if it needs to be shorter than the original, then it, that means I can list maybe one to three points at most. So what I put under Jefferson Davis is early years, born and raised in the South. He's a university graduate and he attended West Point and served in the military. Uh, again, going back to what's important, this is about the president of the Confederacy. Would it be important he's born and raised in the South? Right. University graduate, probably. West Point served in the military. Yeah, that would be important stuff. So what I've done is I've shortened this. This is way less words than what you saw above, and it really doesn't take very long to do. Now, I want you to notice the indentation here. I indent to tell myself the information belongs to something. To watch a, a, I have a short video that I made showing how to make notes for this that you can click on, uh, but when you do these notes, you have to indent to show you what is important. Now, Import, another important item, when you're doing lesson questions, correct the notes if you need to. Maybe you forgot something important.
Last step, study the right material. When studying for a quiz, only look at your notes for lessons that pertain to the quiz. When studying for a unit test, first open up your unit quizzes and look at the questions, then look at the lesson notes after. This second part is really important. One of the best sources of, of study material that you can get when you get to the unit test are the quizzes because some of those questions wind up right back on the unit test and all those questions pertain to the same material and may be asked in a slightly different way on the unit exam. So before you even look at your notes for a unit test, first open those quizzes and do it. Anyway, that's my short little four tips to making notes and I hope that, this, that you found this video helpful. Thanks.